This Negrog here involves one of the best tricks ever, so let me show it to you guys. Well, why is Negrog difficult in the first place? Well, because of this natural lock here. If we were just integrating between 0 and 1 x to the power of 100, well, we know what to do with this thing. We can just, well, bump up the exponent by a 1, making 1 or 1, and then divide by the exponent to get this thing evaluated from 0 to a 1, which simplifies to just 1 over a 100 and 1. Okay, hmm, you can, well, we actually, and we can actually generalize this thing to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of some kind of an n with respect to dx, which will be just, well, x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 in the bounds of 0 and 1, which is just 1 over our n plus 1, that's just the regular power rule combined with the integral from 0 to a1. Okay, but now... The trick. If I were to now, for some reason, differentiate both sides of this equality here, however, not with respect to x, but with respect to the capital N, what would I get? Well, on the left-hand side, I would get this d over dn sign, which actually I would be able to slip into this integral sign because my integral is convergent on my domain, and so I can just do it. However, when I slip it inside of the integral, I will have to change the sign from taking the derivative to taking the partial derivative with respect to the n. However, on the right hand, right -hand side, I can just take the total derivative. No problem in doing that. So what I'm going to be left with on the left-hand side is this integral between 0 and 1 of x to the power of capital N, nothing changes here, but times the natural log of x, because x is just a constant, and we know that rule for derivatives. Okay, and I will also have to put the dx here um, before I forget this. <laughs> and on the right hand side, what we get is just negative 1 divided by n plus 1 squared. Okay, I like it. But now, what if we were to, again differentiate both sides with respect, oh, I didn't leave enough space here, so what we, if we were to once again differentiate both sides with respect to n here? Well, what we would be left with is here the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of capital N times the natural log of x but squared, the natural log squared of x, because well, we are multiplying this log that we already have here by another that well, gets brought down from the n as well, dx is going to be exactly the same as what's going to be the derivative of this thing. It's going to be just negative, well, no, negative 1 multiplied by negative 2 and then divided by capital N plus 1 cubed. Okay, let me do it one more time so you guys for sure see the trick here. So I would like to once again take the derivative of both hand sides with respect to the capital N. And I'm going to get this integral, oh no, this integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of the capital N times ln cubed of x, this time dx. And it's going to be equal to negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 all divided by the capital N plus 1, the power of 4. And I think you see the pattern already, I mean, hopefully. So, I can generalize this thing to saying that if I were to take this integral and, well, differentiate it n times, or rather, no, m times, <laughs> so I don't mix up the letters, I would get, on the left-hand side, the integral of x to the power of the capital N times the natural log to the power of m of x dx. And on the right-hand side, I would get negative 1 to the power of m times m factorial divided by the capital N plus 1 to the power of my n. And I get this formula, which will, will enable me to evaluate this integral that I wanted to evaluate at the beginning. Because I can just set my n equal to a hundred as well as my m equal to a hundred and I will get exactly the integral that I had at the beginning. And doing that will get me the integral between 0 and 1 of, of this x ln of x to the power of a hundred that I wanted to evaluate is equal to well, negative 1 to the power of a hundred, which is an even number, so this thing here disappears, times a hundred factorial divided... 100 factorial divided by 
101 to the power of 101. And that is our answer. It is probably a very, very, very low number because yeah, that's probably a little bit bigger than 100 factorial. Anyway, I mean, this thing here is infinity anyway, so I don't really care about it. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye.